Cavalcade of America, starring Burt Lancaster, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening. This is Burt Lancaster. Tonight, Cavalcade's play is called The Darkest Hour. It's the exciting story of a patriotic young American, Jack Jewett, who foiled a British plot to capture Thomas Jefferson. I will play the part of Jack Jewett. Now, The Darkest Hour, starring Burt Lancaster as Jack Jewett on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Sunday, June 3rd, 1781. The place, the headquarters of Lord Cornwallis in Hanover County, Virginia. Halt! There goes there. Lieutenant Branbury on mission to Lord Cornwallis. Very good, sir. His lordship is expecting you. Take my horse, sentry. Yes, sir. Come in. Lieutenant Branbury reporting, sir. Very good. Uh, sit down, Branbury. Thank you, sir. All right, Branbury. What's the news? Good, sir. I should say very good. Go on. Go on, Lieutenant. The Americans are tired, sir. They have no more stomach for this war. Now that we control Virginia and may move where we please, I'd say it'll be over before long. Don't uh, underestimate the colonies, Branbury. Five years is a long time for no stomach. This time it's true, Your Lordship. From what I've learned here in Virginia, one good blow will finish them. One good blow, eh? <laughs> We've been measuring them for that one blow since 1775. That's just it, sir. Just it? Uh, what do you mean? Your Lordship, they're disheartened, discouraged, tired. Even those who are most wholeheartedly for the war at first are ready to come to terms. You're uh, sure of that? Yes, sir. I've been in taverns and I've heard them, seen them. I tell you, sir, we can end this rebellion here and now with one good stroke. One good stroke? Hmm. One good stroke, Lieutenant. A quick, sharp campaign, sir? A surprise move? No. There's a much better way. A much better way. Gentlemen, please take your chairs. <clears throat> Gentlemen, how would you like this war to end? Thank you very much. Good. Gentlemen, we, get, we can end it here and now in Virginia, perhaps without a battle. <laughs> I, I see you don't believe me, gentlemen. We're going to capture Thomas Jefferson. Oh, yes. Take prisoner the man who wrote the American Declaration of Independence... And we've taken the heart of this revolution. Colonel Tarleton. Yes, Your Lordship. You're going to do it. Yes, sir. No uh, questions, Tarleton? I assume there's a plan, sir. That is. Colonel Simcoe. Yes, sir. I've learned that Baron von Steuben has arrived at Point of Fork on the upper James River with reinforcements for General Green. You will proceed against him. Very good, sir. Tarleton, Simcoe's move will be a masking maneuver for you. You are to disrupt what is left of the Virginia Assembly in Charlottesville... And what is most important, you are to take Governor Jefferson at Monticello. Your force will be 180 dragoons and 70 mounted infantry. That larger force to take one man, sir? Jefferson is not one man, Colonel. The author of the Declaration of Independence embodies the spirit of freedom. He is the revolution. That's all, gentlemen. Colonel Tarleton, you have your orders. Carry them out and end this war now at Monticello. <laughs> Captain. Captain. Colonel Tarleton, sir. We stop here for the night. Yes, sir. And, Captain. Yes, sir. If one word of our mission leaks out. I understand, sir. Good. Find quarters for the men. I'll be in the tavern. Yes, sir. (laughs) 
Where's the landlord? This is my inn, Your Worship. What's it called? The Cuckoo, sir. Hmm. Odd name. Have you a room? Well, to tell the truth. Please do. There's no room, sir. I see. None for an English officer. For no one, Your Worship. We're full up. I see. Hmm. All patriots, eh? Patriots, sir? In what way, Your Worship? Is there more than one way to be a patriot? <laughs> That's a good one. A good one. <laughs> my humor pleases you, even if my uniform does not. The uniform, Your Worship, is common enough hereabouts. Probably. Will you serve me food? That I will, sir. The man needs filling, even if the uniform does not. <laughs> Thank you, landlord. I'll sit over there. Please, gentlemen, I should feel offended were you not to continue your conversations. Please, continue. Ah, why must he come to my inn? He's a colonel, Jimmy. Huh? No. Oh, Jack Jewett. A colonel. And I saw dragoons outside. Now, I wonder why. It's not an uncommon thing to see a colonel with troops. There's something afoot. Aye, and you're a fool, Jack. <laughs> That may be, Jimmy. It's more than may. You were captain in our army and showing your face in here. What if one of them recognizes you? I want to find out where these fine lads are off to. Rumor says they're joining another force that's marching against General Green. Rumor's lost many a battle, Jimmy. Hmm. I wonder if the colonel would like a bit of company with his food. Jack, don't be a fool. On second thought, no. He'd be close enough and not spill a drop of information. No, I think one of his men would be a likelier source. What are you going to do? Be a British soldier for a while, Jimmy. A what? In uniform? I, Jack. Mark you. There are dragoons and infantry outside, quartered in the yards in the stables. Well, the chances are a dragoon could go among the infantry, or an infantryman could go among the dragoons without being known. You idiot. Where do you find a uniform to fit that frame of yours? It is big, but there are big Englishmen, too. Keep the colonel busy with his food, Jimmy. You'll be shot. You'll be killed if they find you out. Sentry? Yes, Captain? Everything's all right? Yes, sir. Good. I'm going to my quarters in the tavern. Keep a sharp watch. Yes, sir. Oh, for it is honor enough to frighten one poor man. And for it is... There, you. You there. Eh? Oh. oh. How do you do? Move along. You go on. Now, that's real unfriendly. It'll be more if you don't move along. All right, all right. Have a nip, Colonel. Sleep it off over there, fellow. Go on now. Move off with you. You're a big one. <laughs> Almost as big as I am. I'll get bigger if you don't move on. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, for if he's not in. Hey, look. What's this? Eh? What? Now, would you look at this, Major? One of your own men over here in the brush. One of our men in the brush? Here, move away. See, Captain? He's right here. That's a bad way to run an army, this. <clears throat> Sorry, Sergeant, but I like the cut of your uniform and probably the fit of it on me. <laughs> Two soldier? Now, how would I know? They don't tell us. Hey, wait a minute. I ain't never seen you before. Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> Why, the same as you, lad. Dragoon in the service of His Majesty. Shh, shh, shh. Here comes the Colonel. Oh. Captain McLeod. Yes, sir, Colonel Felton. We're ready to move? Yes, sir. Very good. And, Captain, we must reach Monticello today. We will, sir. Did I hear the Colonel say Monticello? You've got ears, you did. Now, what would we do at Monticello? Say, who are you? What's your name? Uh, uh, Jewett. Jack Jewett. I've never seen you before. Well, like as not, you haven't. Nor will you again. What? Captain! 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 Captain
Captain McLeod, what's the matter? Who's the man who rode off? I don't know. He asked questions and they went off like a streak. The trouble, Captain McLeod? I don't know, sir. One of our men suddenly broke ranks and rode off. One of our men? Yes, sir. I'll wager he wasn't. After him, you, okay. you, and you. Yes, After him, see that he's caught. He's riding like the wind, Colonel. And so are we, Captain. Full and gallop ahead. We've got to reach Monticello before that man. Forward. Forward! Jack Jewett, open the door. <laughs> None of that, Molly. Don't you know me? Oh, red and alive. Jack Jewett, and in a British uniform. Quick, Molly, let me in. I need help. Uh, come, come into the cabin. Hello. What are you up to, Jack? Where's Todd? Uh, over there, sleep. Get him up. No, never mind, I will. Todd, Todd, uh, come awake, will you? Uh, uh, you Molly! It's Jack Jewett. Jack? Jack, what are you, Todd? You bearing that? I have no time for talk. I need a horse, a strong one, and clothes. Ah, you'll get some clothes in the closet there on the peg, horse in the stable. Good. I'll change. I- I'll go saddle the horse. What are you running from, Jack? Not from, Todd, too. Hand me the britches. Yeah, here. To where? There's British soldiers on their way to Monticello. Monticello? Aye. And unless I miss my guess, they're on their way to take Tom Jefferson. Take Tom Je... What for? Well, can't you guess? Once Tom Jefferson's a prisoner, there are those among us who lose what heart they've left. Why? That'd mean the end. The, the end of the war. Worse. It would mean the end of our land. How far, the British? Well, I had to come by the back trails and the bypaths. I can't risk the roads. They have a good lead, two hours at least. You'll not make it in time, Jack. I've got to. You kill yourself, man, racing along the back trails. You break your neck. It's better to risk my neck than the whole of our cause. Yeah, take this uniform, Todd and Burnham. Yeah. Chances are there'll be British dragoons out after me. They'll not get a word from me. Now, don't risk yourself or Molly, Todd. Tell them you saw me. I won't. You've got to. Like as not, they'll see my trash. Shh, shh, shh. Hide that uniform. Quickly. Now, wait a minute. Give it to me. But, Jack, if they catch you with This is for your own good, Todd. You know. <laughs> It'll look as though you had naught to do with me. Woman, you there in the stable. Come over here. Well, what do you want here? Have you seen a man in dragoon uniform? A big man? A man? No, no one here. Why were you standing in that oar? There he is now. Get him away! Ah, stop it! Oh! Don't let him get away! Fire at him! You'll have to do better than that! Oh, boy, easy. Easy, boy. There he goes. Come on after it. Come on, boy. Ah, that's a good horse. Now oh, we'll see who gets to Tom Jefferson first. And God grant I will. Listening to The Darkest Hour, starring Burt Lancaster as Jack Jewett on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Learning that a British force has been dispatched to capture Thomas Jefferson, Captain Jack Jewett rides to warn him. The British, under Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton, have a head start, and Jewett is forced to take the back trails to avoid discovery. Meanwhile, knowing nothing of the British plan, Thomas Jefferson is at his home, Monticello. Mr. Jefferson? Uh, yes, yes, Patty. Does my playing disturb you? Oh, no. No, not at all. Were you listening? Of course, my dear. Please, go on. All right. Monticello. Yes. What about Monticello? It's beautiful. Yes. It's beautiful here, and just a few miles away, there's ugliness and war and... You're worried, aren't you, Mr. Jefferson? No, Patty, not worried. I'm tired. I know. Will this war ever stop? Do you want it to stop now? Now? Why do you say that? You must have heard the talk. Talk of making terms, ending the war now. Yes, I've heard it. Some of our own assemblymen want to do it, get it over with. They say we haven't got a chance anymore. Virginia overrun with enemy troops. Surrender now and accept parole. Don't listen to them. They're fools. No, they're not fools. No one can blame them, Martha. 
Men always start out with their heads high and hearts filled with courage. We did, didn't we? Yes, we did. We thought of quick victory and then one defeat, another, and another. Victory gets farther and farther away, always just out of reach until one day it takes only a small thing to convince us that, that we are fighting in vain, that the odds against us are hopeless. But they are not. Don't talk like that. I'm only repeating what I've heard. Martha, believe me, if one more thing happens to discourage the people to throw the army into despair, we're done. Is it really that bad? The darkest hour. Martha, pray God that nothing happens now to turn discouragement into bitter and final defeat. <laughs> Make it, will you? I've run your legs to the ground. Well, let's rest for a bit. <laughs> I think we've lost the ones that were after us. Don't make a move, stranger. Hey? Stay as you are. Keep your hands from your pistols. Like that. Who are you? What do you want? I can use your horse, stranger. Listen, man. Get off. Keep your hands clear of the pistols now. You fool. You don't know who I am. I have no wish to know. Well, I don't know who you are either. But if you're a patriot... Patriot? <laughs> I was. It wasn't until I became convinced that patriotism is a dangerous thing. Oh, I was at Brandywine, Monmouth, at Point of Fork. With Steuben? I was what's left of Steuben's force. What happened? We had to run like a pack of frightened rabbits. No, no more talk. I want that horse. Look, man. Get off. Unless you'd like a bullet in your head. That's better. Now stand aside. Why do you want the horse? To go home. Home to my wife and my children. I see. Where is your home? Pennsylvania. But I want no more talk. Wait a minute, man. Look down there. What is it? That cloud of dust. It's a force of enemy dragoons. What of that? That's the end of the war, my friend. The bitter final end. And so much the better. We'll all go home. Yes, you'll go home. Go home to what you had before. Living under a rule that no one wanted. Without being able to raise your voice in that rule. I've heard that talk before. Then hear it again and again. Stand away from the horse. Listen to me, man. That force is on its way to take Tom Jefferson at Monticello. What? What are you saying? Just that. And it mustn't happen. Because if it does, the news will spread fast. Into Pennsylvania and Maryland, to New York and New Jersey. Think what it'll mean. The end. Aye, the end. If we're to lose, let's lose honorably. Not like this. You said you were at Brandywin and Monmouth. Now, what did you see there? I'll tell you. You saw men and boys willing to give their lives and did. Did because they had faith in you and me to carry on. I must get to Monticello. You're a fool. And I'll be a fool. Will you? I... You'll not make it. The horse won't carry you. A few more miles is all I ask of him. Then the rest on foot. And if you lose... Then we all lose. Get back on your horse. And God speed you. Captain McLeod... Yes, Colonel Talton. We'll reach Monticello in an hour. We should, sir. We'll not ride straight on, Captain McLeod. Thirty dragoons will approach from the west, thirty from the east. The infantry will circle above and beyond. Monticello is to be surrounded. Yes, sir. And Captain McLeod. Sir? Remind yourself and your men that this is no criminal we're taking, but a gallant and brave man. I will have his home and his possessions respected. I understand, Colonel. Not one thing will be touched. If there must be firing, avoid firing into the house. But if we meet resistance, sir... Overcome it as quickly as possible. But respect Governor Jefferson and his possessions. You have your orders. Carry them out. Who is he? <laughs> Captain. Captain John Jewett. I must see Governor Jefferson. He's a bitch, I? Right. I was working in the study. Great heavens, man. Don't 
Governor Jefferson, the enemy. They're coming to take you. The enemy here in Monticello? Please, sir. You must leave. They'll be here very short time. Caesar, fetch medicine bandages. Yes, sir. No time, sir. They're almost here. We'll attend to you first. Your face is torn to shreds. Yes, I know. I had a ride through thickets and... Here, here. Take this chair. Yes, sir, please. We've no time. Get your family out. I'll get my family out. You've ridden far, haven't you? Yes, sir. To warn you. Please, sir, we can't stand here talking. There's no time. You must go, too. Captain Jewett, I appreciate this service, but I must refuse to leave. I will not run like a fox before the hounds. What if you're taken, sir? The things, Master John. Thank you, Caesar. Put them down and tell my family they must leave immediately. Right away, Caesar. Yes, sir, Master John. Now, Captain, we must attend to your cuts first. My family will be safe. But it's you. Believe me, sir. You've got to leave. Oh, uh, Master John, there's enemy troops coming into the town. You see? There's still time, Governor Jefferson. Take the back road. How do you know, Caesar? Boy, rode up from the town. All right, Caesar. Get my family out fast. Yes, sir, Master Tom, right now. Sir. And you, Mr. Jefferson? My home is here. No, it's not. You have no home, Mr. Jefferson. What are you talking about? You have no home any longer, nor I, nor anyone who's fought. We have a cause, sir. That's all. So you want me to run and let people say that Tom Jefferson turned tail and scooted away from the British? Ah, yeah, let them say what they like. Captain, do you believe our cause would be lost if I were taken? Yes. Believe me, sir. I've heard men talk. So have I. No, I cannot betray a trust. I cannot be a coward. Coward? It would be cowardice to stay. What? Yes, because you're afraid of what people will say, living people. To whom else shall I listen? The dead. The dead of Concord and Lexington. The dead of Boston and Philadelphia, of Virginia and of Maryland and of New York. These are the dead. These are the only ones who have a right to a voice now. They want you to go, to keep alive the cause that they died for. There's still time, sir. Time, Yes, there is time, Captain. You'll go? I'll go, Captain Joyce. The house is empty, Colonel Talton. Yes, empty. And Jefferson's gone. Safe somewhere. His paper, sir? Yes. What is it, sir? Listen to this, Captain McLeod. And when the day comes when we shall live in peace, may God grant that it may be coincident with freedom. Not only freedom of body, but freedom of mind and heart. But it will entail a greater fight fight to keep alive the ideals and principles for which we wage this present struggle. Thomas Jefferson wrote that, sir. Yes. Come along, Captain McLeod. Lock the door to this study, Captain. Lock it? But there may be papers, valuable papers. Lock it, Captain. Perhaps someday, Thomas Jefferson will want to use this study again. week's cavalcade star will be one of the loveliest ladies of the screen, Irene Dunn. Our play is called Brian Station. It's an exciting drama about a woman named Jemima Johnson who outwitted a band of Indians attacking her settlement in the Kentucky wilderness. Be sure to listen to Cavalcade next week for another thrilling drama starring Irene Dunn. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Darkest Hour, was based on the book Jefferson the Virginian by Dumas Malone, published by Little Brown and Company, and was adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. The program was directed by Jack Zoller. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. Burt Lancaster may soon be seen in the Harold Heck Norma production, Kiss the Blood Off My Hands, a universal international release. We've been asked to make the following announcement by the American Association for the United Nations. The responsibility for securing a lasting peace 
is everyone's obligation, and our unstinted support of the United Nations is essential to its success. Remember, we can work it out together or fight it out alone. As Americans, let's work it out together. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to Brian's Station, starring Irene Dunn. Cavalcade of America comes to you each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.